What is a tidal wave? A tidal wave, or tsunami, is not caused by windy conditions or tides. But instead by underwater earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. The seismic disturbances create huge upward forces on the water, the opposite of dropping rocks into water. A tsunami is a series of several waves with a period of more than 30 minutes between each. Crest. The ocean first recedes from the beach, then water rushes inland at a very high speed. Large tsunamis can be quite destructive upon reaching the shoreline due to their amplitudes. The most deadly recorded tsunami occurred December 26, 2004, in the Indian Ocean. The earthquake that caused it was off the west coast of Sumatra, Indonesia. That quake released an amount of energy equivalent to 550 million times the energy released in the Hiroshima nuclear bomb. One part of the ocean bottom was lifted by 4 to 5 meters, 13 to 16 feet, and moved horizontally 10 meters, 33 feet. The tsunami, traveling at a speed of 500 to 1000 km per hour, had a low amplitude. 60 centimeters, in mid-ocean, but when it crashed into the coasts from Thailand. To India and as far as South Africa it had an amplitude as high as 24 meters, 79 feet. Some 230,000 people were killed and more than a million made homeless. What is resonance and how can it be achieved? All objects that can vibrate have a natural frequency of oscillation. If you hold one end of a ruler on a desk and push down and then suddenly release the other end you will see it vibrate. The natural frequency depends on the material and its width, thickness, and length. Resonance occurs when an external oscillating force is exerted on an object that can vibrate. When the frequency of the external force equals the natural frequency then the amplitude of the oscillation reaches a maximum. This condition is called resonance. A very small external force is needed to create a large oscillation amplitude. You can explore resonance with a mass, like a yo-yo or a heavy metal washer on a string. Hold the top of the string still and pull the object to one side and watch it oscillate at its natural frequency. Then shake the top of the string at the same frequency and watch the amplitude of the oscillation increase. You will have found the resonance frequency. If you raise or lower the shaking frequency you will find that the amplitude of the oscillation is smaller. What is the principle of superposition? When two waves overlap they don't crash and destroy one another. Instead, they pass through each other without interaction. The graphs below show two waves approaching, overlapping, and moving away. They continue to move at the same velocity throughout.
the arrows show their motions. The dotted drawings show the individual waves while the solid drawings show the resultants. The amplitudes of the two waves add together. Producing either a larger wave if they are both positive or both negative. They produce a smaller wave if one is positive and the other negative. In fact, as shown, for, they can produce no amplitude at all. The large amplitudes are called constructive interference. The reduced amplitudes are called destructive interference. How is surfing a lot like downhill skiing? H. How can they be similar? Surfing is done on water, skiing on snow. The main similarity is that in both cases the athlete and board travel down a hill. In skiing, the hill is a mountain covered with snow. While in surfing the hill is the rising water of a breaking ocean wave. An ideal surfing wave has a large amplitude as it reaches an extremely gradual decrease in ocean depth. While the surfer moves down the wave, the water on the front edge of a crest continually rises underneath the surfer, allowing the surfer to ride down the wave without actually moving downward. Some of the best surfing is done on Waikiki Beach on Oahu in the summer and the north shores of Oahu and Kauai in Hawaii in the winter. In the continental United States the best surfing is in Southern California. The Pacific Ocean, famous for its long wavelengths and gradual decreasing depth beaches has some of the best surfing in the world. How did resonance destroy the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in Washington State? The Tacoma Narrows Bridge or Galloping Gertie as it was often called. Was built in 1940 and was known for its unusual, undulating movement. All bridges vibrate to some extent, but to many motorists. The suspension bridge in Tacoma felt more like an amusement park ride than a bridge. On the morning of November 7, 1940, four months after the bridge opened. The wind was blowing at approximately 42 miles per hour. This moderate wind hit the solid bridge deck and caused the deck to vibrate. Back and forth as it did almost every day since the bridge had opened. But the bridge began to vibrate more dramatically than ever before. It appeared as though a standing wave had formed between the two towers of the bridge. There was one distinct node in the center of the bridge and an anti-node on each side of the node. After several hours of dramatic vibrations, the bridge deck collapsed into the river below. Along with its only casualty, a dog named Tubby, left in a car by its owner, who narrowly escaped death himself. There is still an active controversy about the exact cause of the collapse of the bridge. How can resonance cause crystal glasses to break?
Many years ago Ella Fitzgerald performed a physics experiment in an advertisement for Memorex, R. Audio tape cassettes The company claimed that the famous singer could create a pure tone at just the right frequency to cause a crystal wine glass to break and that the Memorex, R. Tapes recorded and played back sounds so accurately that the glass would break both when M.S. Fitzgerald sang and when the recorded sound was played is it live or is it Memorex, R. Was the advertising question. Although it is hard to think that glass is something that can bend. If you tap the rim of a thin wine glass you can hear it ping. The shape of the rim of the glass oscillates. When the amplified sound waves pushed on the glass it distorted its shape. Some of the kinetic energy in the sound wave was transferred into the kinetic energy of the oscillating glass. When the frequency of the sound wave matched the natural frequency of the glass the amplitude of oscillation was large enough to shatter the glass. Sound can make glass break when amplified because the sound waves can cause the glass to oscillate and bend. When enough kinetic energy is used, the sound waves can distort the glass to the point where it cracks or shatters. How are standing sound waves generated in musical instruments? Many instruments depend on standing waves to produce their sound. Standing waves are created on the strings of a guitar, piano, or violin and in the air columns of a trumpet, flute, or organ pipe. The string is caused to oscillate either by plucking it, pulling it aside and then letting go, or by bowing it, where the stickiness of the horse hair on the bow also pulls the string aside and then releases it. In a piano a felt-covered hammer strikes the string, starting it vibrating. In a trumpet or other brass instrument the player's vibrating lips create the traveling sound wave that is reflected when it reaches the open end of the instrument. In a flute or organ pipe that mimics a flute, the player blows air over a hole. The moving air interacting with the hole produces a periodic change in the pressure of the air inside the tube which creates the traveling sound wave. In a clarinet or saxophone the player blows through a narrow gap between a flexible piece of bamboo called the reed and the mouthpiece. Oboes and bassoons have two reeds separated by a thin gap. The stream of air causes the reed to vibrate. Periodically stopping the airflow and causing the sound wave. In order to change the pitch produced by an instrument, the standing wave inside the instrument must be altered. By changing the length of a wind instrument, or the tension and length of the strings for a string instrument, a different frequency standing wave is produced, which creates a different musical pitch. Pressing a key on a trumpet inserts an additional length of tubing into the instrument. On a flute, clarinet, or saxophone a hole on the instrument is covered or uncovered. Changing the effective length of the instrument. On a piano each note uses a string of a particular length. 
On a violin or guitar the player's finger is used to change the length. Thicker strings have lower pitches than thinner strings of the same length. Increasing the tension on a string increases the frequency of the standing waves, and thus the pitch. How do antennas transmit and receive signals? Antennas for radio and television signals are used to either transmit or receive electromagnetic radio waves. Oscillating voltages produced by the transmitter cause the electrons in a metal wire or rod. The transmitting antenna, to oscillate, creating an oscillating electric field that in turn creates an oscillating magnetic field that creates another oscillating electric field. The combined electric and magnetic wave moves away from the antenna at the speed of light. A receiving antenna is a metal rod, wire, or a loop. When an electromagnetic wave strikes the antenna it causes the electrons in the metal to oscillate at the same frequency as that of the wave. The oscillating electrons produce a voltage in the receiver that eventually results in the sounds and slash or pictures produced by a radio or television. What is an electromagnetic wave? Electromagnetic waves consist of two transverse waves, one an oscillating electric field. The other a corresponding magnetic field perpendicular to it. Light, infrared, ultraviolet, radio, and X-rays are all examples of electromagnetic waves. All electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light when they are in a vacuum. Electromagnetic waves are characterized by their frequency or wavelength and amplitude. Electromagnetic waves differ from other waves in that they do not need a medium such as air, water, or steel through which to travel. What is the Fahrenheit temperature scale? Temperature scales are artificial in the sense that they are related to temperatures important to humans. The German physicist Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit developed the first well-known temperature scale in 1714. Equipped with the first mercury thermometer, Fahrenheit defined a scale in which the freezing point of water was 32 degrees Fahrenheit and the boiling point was 212 degrees Fahrenheit. How do you convert from one scale to another? Use the conversion chart below to convert between Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kelvin. From to formula Celsius Kelvin degree C equals K plus 273. How is an electromagnetic wave created and detected?
Electromagnetic waves are created by accelerating electrons that create an oscillating electric field. This field in turn creates an oscillating magnetic field. Which creates another oscillating electric field, and so on. The energy carried by the waves radiates into the area around the moving charges. When it strikes a material whose electrons can move freely, it causes these particles to oscillate. What is the Kelvin scale? The Kelvin temperature scale, developed by William Thompson, Lord Kelvin. 1824 to 1907, in 1848, is widely used by scientists throughout the world. Absolute zero is the temperature at which thermal energy is at a minimum. Each division in the Kelvin scale, called a Kelvin, K is equal to a degree on the Celsius scale, but the difference is where zero is. In the Celsius scale, zero degrees is the freezing point of water while in the Kelvin scale. The zero point is at absolute zero. Therefore, zero degrees Kelvin is equal to minus 273.15 degrees Celsius, 0 degrees Celsius is equal to 273.15 kelvins. The Kelvin scale is used for very low or very high temperatures when water is not involved. How are thermographs used? Thermographs, which detect the amount of infrared radiation emanating from objects or regions. Use colors to display the temperature on an image. Typically, red indicates the warmest temperatures, while blue indicates cooler temperatures. Thermographs are used throughout science but are well noted for their use in detecting humans in wilderness areas, identifying areas of homes that need more insulation, and in measuring the temperature over regions of Earth. How can temperature be controlled? A device that maintains a constant temperature is called a thermostat. A traditional home thermostat contains a coiled bimetallic strip. When the temperature drops below a set point, the strip trips a switch that turns on the furnace. More modern home thermostats use an electronic thermometer and electronic. Circuits that turn the furnace and air conditioning system on and off. Why do water waves break as they approach the beach? Water waves rarely break, or form white caps. When they come in contact with a cliff or mountainside shoreline. Waves only break as they approach a gradual decrease in depths, such as a beach. A shoreline with a gradual decrease in depth will produce more. Spectacular white caps than a wave that encounters a steep decrease in depth.
The reason waves break is the result of the way the wave velocity depends on the depth of the water. Consider a water wave with a large amplitude. As the wave moves toward the beach, at first it travels at a constant velocity. As the ocean depth begins to decrease, the bottom of the wave gradually encounters more and more friction with the beach. Causing the lower part of the wave to travel slower than the upper part. As the lower part slows down, the crest, moving faster, moves over the trough. When there is not enough water to support the crest, the wave breaks or forms a white cap. Where are the best surfing beaches? The best surfing beaches are located along the edges of oceans. When wind conditions have produced waves with large wavelengths. Another requirement of a good surfing beach is a gradual decrease in water depth. Can a temperature be measured without contacting the object? As was described in the chapter on energy, when an object is hot it transfers energy to colder objects. If it is in contact with the other object the transfer is by means of conduction. But all objects at temperatures above absolute zero radiate electromagnetic waves in the infrared part of the spectrum. See the chapter on waves for a description of the spectrum. A hotter object radiates more energy this way. And so there will be a net transfer of energy from the hot object to cold objects around it. An electronic sensor can detect the infrared radiation and convert the amount and wavelength of radiation it receives to a temperature. The sensors can be built into cameras that create a picture that shows the temperature of every location in the picture. Such a picture is known as a thermograph. An electronic thermometer within the thermostat in your home or office triggers. A switch that turns your furnace on or off, according to the temperature. How did radio communications develop? An electromagnetic wave with no changes in amplitude or frequency. Carries no information it cannot be used for communication. The first method of using these waves to communicate was to switch them on and off in regular patterns. Letters were represented by a combination of long and short pulses using what is called Morse code after Samuel S. B. Morse who developed the code to transmit information over wires, the telegraph. In 1895 Guglielmo Marconi, 1874-1937, a 20-year-old Italian inventor, created a device that transmitted and received electromagnetic waves over a 1 km, 3,280 foot, distance. Later improvements to his antenna and the development of a crude amplifier enabled him to receive a British patent for his wireless telegraph. In 1897, he transmitted signals to ships 29 kilometers, 18 miles. 
from shore and in 1901 he was able to send wireless messages across the Atlantic Ocean. As a result of Marconi's work on radio transmitters and receivers, he was the co-winner of the 1909 Nobel Prize in Physics. Over the next decade transmitters and receivers were improved. Enough that they could be installed in ocean-going ships. Voice communication over the telephone had existed since 1876, but if the distance was to be extended, the voices had to be amplified to be heard. In 1906 Lee DeForest invented a vacuum tube amplifier he called the Audion. It took until 1915 for a radio receiver to be sold using Audions. In 1916 DeForest had developed an Audion-based transmitter that allowed dance music to be transmitted 40 miles. A number of other experimental stations demonstrated music by radio then called wireless. A large number of radio amateurs made significant advances. When the United States entered World War I in 1917 all stations not owned by the government were shut down and it became illegal for people to listen to any radio transmission. Samuel S. B. Morse was famous for inventing the Morse code that allowed people to first transmit messages over telegraph wires. During the war, radio was used to communicate between ships and between land and the ships. After the war, amateurs were forced to use only one wavelength, 200 meters, 1,500 hertz. Wavelengths shorter than that were thought to be useless for government use. One amateur was able to send signals 3,000 miles. In 1921 transatlantic voice transmissions were made. Companies began to use radio for specialized needs. Like to send time information to jewelers to allow them to set their clocks. From 1919 through 1921 radio was mostly used to transmit musical concerts. The first transmission of a football game occurred in November 1919. By 1922 newspapers had developed radio stations transmitting news, weather reports, crop reports, and lectures. Large companies such as General Electric, Westinghouse, AT&T, and RCA began to be involved in developing commercial broadcasting. From 1922 to 1923, as the number of stations grew without regulation, chaos reigned. In 1928 the government announced new assignments in the frequency band 550 to 1600 kHz. Many more assignments were added after World War II, but these regulations are still in use today. What is a standing wave? The example used above showed what happened when two single waves going in opposite directions met. A continuous wave is a set of single waves, one after another. You can produce such a wave by shaking one end of a rope up and down at a constant frequency. Now, if the other end of the rope is tied to something that doesn't move, the wave will be reflected back toward you. 
If you shake the rope at the correct frequencies the two waves will overlap each other and will seem to stand still. Producing a standing wave. Two distinct regions on a standing wave can be seen. At certain points the rope won't be moving. That point is called a node. The point where the motion of the rope is largest is called the antinode. The nodes are locations of destructive interference where the two waves moving in opposite directions have opposite amplitudes. The crest of one wave and the trough of the other are at the same location. The antinodes are at locations of constructive interference where the two waves have both positive or negative amplitudes, that is, both are either crests or troughs. The frequencies that produce standing waves depend on the length of the rope and the velocity of the wave on the rope. The lowest frequency will have nodes at the two ends and an antinode in the center. The next higher frequency will have a node in the center and ends and two antinodes. At each higher frequency the number of nodes and antinodes increases by one. Why did Gabriel Fahrenheit define the freezing point of water to be 32 degrees Fahrenheit instead of zero? Fahrenheit did not define 32 degrees as the freezing point of water. Instead, he defined zero degrees as the freezing point of a water and salt mixture. Since salt lowers the freezing point of water, the freezing point for this mixture was lower than it would have been for plain water. Upon defining the degree intervals between the freezing and boiling points of the water and salt mixture, and he found that water itself freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. How do astronomers determine the temperature of the sun? When iron is hot, you can feel the energy radiating from it. That radiation is in the form of infrared waves leaving the iron. When iron gets extremely hot, it produces a red glow and when it gets even warmer, it can take on a whitish glow. The temperature of iron and other objects can be measured by the amount of radiation flowing from it as well as by the light it emits. Scientists measure the temperature of stars and the sun by analyzing the color and brightness of the stars. From such measurements, astronomers have determined that the surface of the Sun is approximately 5,500 degrees Celsius 9,900 degrees Fahrenheit. What do Celsius temperatures feel like? If you live in the United States you learn what various temperatures feel like. You recognize that 86 degrees Fahrenheit is typical of a hot summer day and that minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit is a very cold winter day. What is the electromagnetic spectrum?
The electromagnetic spectrum is the wide range of electromagnetic, M, waves from low to high frequency. The spectrum ranges from low frequency radio waves all the way to gamma rays, which have a very high frequency. In the middle of the spectrum is a small region containing the frequencies of light. What is impedance matching? Impedance is the opposition to wave motion exerted by a medium. When a wave travels from one medium into another, the impedance changes, causing some of the energy of the wave to be reflected back into the original medium. Therefore not all of the wave's energy travels into the new medium. An impedance matching device between the two media allows for a smooth transition in impedance and reduces reflections. What are dead spots in auditoriums? Poorly designed auditoriums can have dead spots. Dead spots are places where destructive interference occurs from the interaction of two or more sound waves. For example, a soloist on stage sends sound waves into the audience. Some of the waves hit the walls of the auditorium, while other waves travel directly to the listeners. In some situations, a direct wave can destructively interfere with a reflected wave so they cancel each other out at that particular location. As a result, the listeners seated in those particular seats would hear nothing from that soloist. Someone sitting a few seats over from the dead spot, however, might not experience the destructive interference and would hear the soloist just fine. Refer to the chapter on sound for handy answers dealing with acoustical engineering. Who invented the first thermometer? Although Galileo, 1564-1642, is credited with developing the first thermometer in 1592, his thermometer was open to the atmosphere. So it measured a combination of temperature and atmospheric pressure. It was not until 1713 that Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit 1686-1736 developed the first closed-tube mercury thermometer. Combined with the temperature scale he defined the following year. Fahrenheit made a significant contribution to science. Can a microwave oven be used to dry things? Since water molecules are warmed and eventually boil off by microwaves, anything that is wet can be dried in the microwave. However, there is one very important consideration that must be made before placing. The object inside a microwave the object being dried must not contain a great deal of water itself. Microwaves are wonderful at drying wet books, papers, and magazines. 
but must never be used to dry things like plants or small animals. Living things would be killed by the resonance of water molecules inside their bodies. What is the lowest possible temperature? The lowest possible temperature is called absolute zero, zero K. It is the temperature at which molecular motion is at a minimum and cannot be further reduced. While absolute zero can never be reached, see the third law of thermodynamics later in this chapter. The present record low temperature is 4.5 NK, 4.5 billionths of a Kelvin. Why shouldn't metal objects be placed inside microwave ovens? Manufacturers caution consumers about placing metal containers. An aluminium foil inside microwave ovens for two main reasons. The first reason is that metal and aluminium may impede cooking. Microwaves warm food by transmitting energy to water and fat molecules within the food. If food is placed under aluminium foil or in a metal container, the microwaves will be reflected from the metal and won't be able to reach the water molecules and cook the food. The second reason for not placing metal objects inside a microwave oven is for the safety of the microwave oven itself. Metal acts as a mirror to microwaves. If too much metal is placed in the oven, the microwaves will bounce around the oven in waves that can damage the magnetron that produces the microwaves. If the metal is the correct size it can act as a microwave receiver. And the induced voltages can produce sparks that can ignite the food. What is the function of the grating on the door of a microwave oven? People using microwave ovens want to see the food cooking inside the oven. Yet not be bombarded by potentially harmful microwaves. In order to prevent the escape of microwaves through the plastic or glass door, a grating consisting of small holes is used to reflect the microwaves back into the oven. The microwaves, which have a wavelength of about 12 cm 4.7 inches, are too big to pass through the holes, but visible light whose wavelength is smaller than the opening, can easily pass through the grating. Although the grating protects people from the microwaves, some microwaves can still leak out through the door seal, however, if it's not cleaned occasionally. Does the dimension of an antenna play a significant role in the reception of an electromagnetic wave? The length of an antenna determines the frequency that it best receives. The most efficient antennas have a length equal to half the wavelength of the wave it is receiving. This allows the induced electrical current in the receiving antenna to resonate at that particular frequency. 
If the antenna is a simple rod it is most sensitive when its length is one quarter the wavelength. A loop or coil antenna are used for the low frequency, long wavelength signals in the AM band. A half wavelength straight wire antenna would be over 100 of meters long. Shorter wires or rods can be used and are more efficient if coils of wire are used to load the antenna. Home FM radio and television antennas are designed to receive a broad range of frequencies. But with less sensitivity. Antennas for the ultra-high frequencies used in digital high-definition televisions are very short and can be easily mounted outside on rooftops or on top of television sets. Where can resonance be found on the playground? Children discover resonance early in life. When playing on swings, they use their arms and legs to pump themselves back and forth on the swing. They recognize that if they pull back on the chains every time the swing is at its largest backward displacement they will achieve the largest amplitude. If, however, the pull back at other times, or if a parent pushes at the wrong time. The amplitude will be decreased because the external frequency isn't at the natural frequency. Who developed the Celsius scale? On the Celsius scale the freezing point of water is 0 degrees and the boiling point is 100 degrees. The Celsius scale is named after a person whose life work was dedicated to astronomy. Anders Celsius, 1701-1744, a Swedish astronomer, spent most of his life studying the heavens. Before developing the Celsius temperature scale in 1742, he published a book in 1733 documenting the details of hundreds of observations he had made of the aurora borealis, or northern lights. Celsius died in 1744 at the age of 43. Who demonstrated that electromagnetic waves exist? Heinrich Hertz, 1857-1894, was a German physicist who was the first person to demonstrate that electromagnetic waves existed. He designed a transmitter and receiver that produced waves with a 4-meter wavelength. He used standing waves to measure their wavelength. He showed that they could be reflected, refracted, polarized, and could produce interference. It was Hertz's breakthroughs in electromagnetic waves that paved the way for the development of radio. In 1930 Hertz was honored by having the unit of frequency, which was cycles per second, replaced by the Hertz, Hertz. Who predicted electromagnetic waves? In 1861, James Clerk Maxwell, 1831-1879, to 
demonstrated the mathematical relationship between oscillating electric and magnetic fields. In his treatise on electricity and magnetism, written in 1873, Maxwell described the nature of electric and magnetic fields using four differential equations, known to physicists today as Maxwell's equations. Putting the four equations together predicted the existence of the electromagnetic wave. Maxwell was a professor at Cambridge University in England from 1871 until his death. In 1879, he published other works on thermodynamics and the motion of matter as well. He also developed the kinetic theory of gases, and performed research in the field of color vision. Although Maxwell is not widely known to the lay audience, he is revered in the scientific community. And rates in the pantheon of physics greats with Newton and Einstein. What are transformers? An impedance matching device is called a transformer. Instead of an abrupt change between the two media. A transformer provides a smoother, gradual transition from the old to the new medium. Depending upon the wave and the medium, different transformers. Such as quarter wavelength and tapered transformers, can be used to help minimize reflection. An example of a tapered transformer can be found in soundproof rooms or sound studios. Any sound that is produced is supposed to be absorbed by the impedance matching material on the walls. Special foam, tapered in a V-like shape is used as a transformer to gradually absorb all the sound into the walls. The gradual changeover from the air medium to the wall. Medium prevents sound from reflecting back into the air. An example of a quarter wavelength transformer can be found on many camera lenses and eyeglasses. The quarter wavelength thick coating on a lens is used to reduce reflections off the lens surface. Allowing more light into the lens. Electrical transformers are also used to match impedances by changing the varying voltages and currents in an electronic circuit. Modern electronic circuits make very minimal use of transformers because of their weight and size. What are transformers? An impedance matching device is called a transformer. Instead of an abrupt change between the two media, a transformer provides a smoother, gradual transition from the old to the new medium. Depending upon the wave and the medium, different transformers, such as quarter wavelength and tapered transformers, can be used to help minimize reflection. An example of a tapered transformer can be found in soundproof rooms or sound studios. Any sound that is produced is supposed to be absorbed by the impedance matching material on the walls. Special foam, tapered in a V-like shape, is used as a transformer to gradually absorb all the sound into the walls. The gradual changeover from the air medium to the wall. 
medium prevents sound from reflecting back into the air. An example of a quarter wavelength transformer can be found on many camera lenses and eyeglasses. The quarter wavelength thick coating on a lens is used to reduce reflections off the lens surface. Allowing more light into the lens. Electrical transformers are also used to match imp tenses by changing the varying voltages and currents in an electronic circuit. Modern electronic circuits make very minimal use of transformers because of their weight and size. What is the Doppler effect? The Doppler effect is the change in frequency of a wave that results from an object's changing position relative to an observer. A well-known example of the Doppler effect is when an ambulance zooms by you and makes a wee-yo sound. The high-pitched wee is caused by sound waves that are bunched together. Because the ambulance is moving in the same direction as the emitting sound waves. The bunching together of sound waves creates an increase. In the frequency and results in a higher pitch sound. The low pitched yo sound occurs when the vehicle moves away from the propagation of the sound wave. Since the ambulance moves away from the sound wave, the spacing between successive waves becomes greater. This decrease in the frequency of the sound wave results in a lower pitch. What is the Doppler effect? The Doppler effect is the change in frequency of a wave that results from an object's changing position relative to an observer. A well-known example of the Doppler effect is when an ambulance zooms by you and makes a wee-yo sound. The high-pitched wee is caused by sound waves that are bunched together. Because the ambulance is moving in the same direction as the emitting sound waves. The bunching together of sound waves creates an increase. In the frequency and results in a higher pitch sound. The low pitched yo sound occurs when the vehicle moves away from the propagation of the sound wave. Since the ambulance moves away from the sound wave, the spacing between successive waves becomes greater. This decrease in the frequency of the sound wave results in a lower pitch. Who was the Doppler effect named after? Johann Christian Doppler, 1803-1853, the Austrian mathematician for whom the Doppler effect is named. Proposed in 1842 that the color of double stars rotating about each other would depend on whether the star was approaching or receding from Earth. The effect was too small to be measured. But in 1845 Christophorus Henricus Diodorus buys B. A. L. Lot. 1817-1890, set up an experiment using had two sets of trumpeters. One set remained at rest while the other was on an open railway. 
car traveling at the then fantastic speed of 40 miles per hour. Although both sets of trumpeters played the same note, the change in tone was clearly heard. Doppler later extended his theory to the case when both sound source and observer were moving. French physicist Hippolyte Fizeau, 1819-1896, later extended Doppler's theory to light. Who was the Doppler effect named after? Johann Christian Doppler, 1803-1853, the Austrian mathematician for whom the Doppler effect is named. Proposed in 1842 that the color of double stars rotating about each other would depend on whether the star was approaching or receding from Earth. The effect was too small to be measured. But in 1845 Christophorus Henricus Diedericus buys B.A.L. Lot. 1817-1890, set up an experiment using had two sets of trumpeters. One set remained at rest while the other was on an open railway. Car traveling at the then fantastic speed of 40 miles per hour. Although both sets of trumpeters played the same note, the change in tone was clearly heard. Doppler later extended his theory to the case when both sound source and observer were moving. French physicist Hippolyte Fizeau, 1819-1896, later extended Doppler's theory to light. What is the difference between a red shift and a blue shift? The visible color spectrum ranges from the low frequency red, orange, and yellow, to the higher frequency green, blue, indigo, and violet. Astronomers observing the planets, stars, and galaxies use the Doppler effect to measure the velocity at which objects are moving, rotating, or revolving. The faster the object is moving, the more the frequency is shifted. Most galaxies are moving away from us and their light is red shifted. In general, the further away, the greater the red shift. Recently astronomers have detected more than 400 planets. Revolving about other stars using the Doppler effect. The gravitational force of the planet on the star causes the planet and star each to circle around a common point. Usually close to, but not in the center of, the star. As a result the star wobbles with the same period as the orbital period of the planet. The effect is truly tiny. Jupiter causes the Sun to wobble in a circle with a speed of 12 meters per second. By measuring the Doppler effect in the light from the star, they can find its velocity and how it changes over time. With that information they can determine the period, distance from the star, and mass of the planet. Most discoveries have been of extremely massive planets. But recently a planet with a mass only a few times that of Earth was detected. It is close to a dim reddish star and the temperature of its surface is estimated to be tens of degrees below the freezing point of water. 
if the planet has greenhouse warming it might be able to sustain life. What is the difference between a red shift and a blue shift? The visible color spectrum ranges from the low frequency red, orange, and yellow, to the higher frequency green, blue, indigo, and violet. Astronomers observing the planets, stars, and galaxies use the Doppler effect to measure the velocity at which objects are moving, rotating, or revolving. The faster the object is moving, the more the frequency is shifted. Most galaxies are moving away from us and their light is red shifted. In general, the further away, the greater the redshift. Recently astronomers have detected more than 400 planets revolving about other stars using the Doppler effect. The gravitational force of the planet on the star causes the planet and star each to circle around a common point. Usually close to, but not in the center of, the star. As a result the star wobbles with the same period as the orbital period of the planet. The effect is truly tiny. Jupiter causes the Sun to wobble in a circle with a speed of 12 meters per second. By measuring the Doppler effect in the light from the star, they can find its velocity and how it changes over time. With that information they can determine the period, distance from the star, and mass of the planet. Most discoveries have been of extremely massive planets. But recently a planet with a mass only a few times that of Earth was detected. It is close to a dim reddish star and the temperature of its surface is estimated to be tens of degrees below the freezing point of water. If the planet has greenhouse warming it might be able to sustain life. What does the fact that most galaxies are seen with a red shift mean to astronomers? The fact that astronomers observe most of the galaxies in the universe as having a red shift means that overall galaxies are moving away from our galaxy, the Milky Way. This can only be happening if the universe as a whole is expanding. The expansion of the universe led to the development of the Big Bang Theory of the universe's creation. What does the fact that most galaxies are seen with a red shift mean to astronomers? The fact that astronomers observe most of the galaxies in the universe as having a red shift means that overall galaxies are moving away from our galaxy, the Milky Way. This can only be happening if the universe as a whole is expanding. The expansion of the universe led to the development of the Big Bang Theory of the universe's creation. How do the police use the Doppler effect in radar guns?
the police use the Doppler effect when checking for speeding vehicles. A radar gun sends out radar waves at a particular frequency. As the radar wave hits a vehicle, the wave reflects back toward the radar gun at a different frequency. The frequency of the reflected wave depends upon the direction and speed of the vehicle. The faster the speed, the greater the frequency change. The radar gun determines the speed of the vehicle by measuring the difference between the emitted frequency and the reflected frequency and computing the speed from that measurement. How do the police use the Doppler effect in radar guns? The police use the Doppler effect when checking for speeding vehicles. A radar gun sends out radar waves at a particular frequency. As the radar wave hits a vehicle, the wave reflects back toward the radar gun at a different frequency. The frequency of the reflected wave depends upon the direction and speed of the vehicle. The faster the speed, the greater the frequency change. The radar gun determines the speed of the vehicle by measuring the difference between the emitted frequency and the reflected frequency and computing the speed from that measurement. What is radar? Radar is an acronym for Radio Detection and Ranging. A radar installation emits electromagnetic waves and detects the waves reflected from an object. It measures the time for the echo to return to find the distance of the object. The radar dish is constantly rotating, permitting it to find the direction of the object as well. Radar is used in many different arenas, but was first used in World War II to detect the approach of enemy bombers. What is radar? Radar is an acronym for Radio Detection and Ranging. A radar installation emits electromagnetic waves and detects the waves reflected from an object. It measures the time for the echo to return to find the distance of the object. The radar dish is constantly rotating, permitting it to find the direction of the object as well. Radar is used in many different arenas, but was first used in World War II to detect the approach of enemy bombers. Who developed radar? Radar was developed independently in many countries in the 1930s. But, in 1935, Robert Watson Watt, 1892-1973, a Scottish physicist, was the leader of a group that created the first radar defense system for the British military. Although a large number of nations, from the United States and Canada, to Britain, France, and Germany, to the Soviet Union and Japan, worked to develop radar systems during the 1930s. 
the British system of ground-based radar stations were the first to use radar effectively in warfare. By the early 1940s radar systems were miniaturized enough to be installed in aircraft so that they could engage other aircraft in fights at night. Ironically, Watson Watt became a deserving victim of his own technology 19 years later. According to Canadian police, Watson Watt had been speeding on a stretch of Canadian road and was detected by a police radar gun. Watson Watt willingly paid the fine and drove away. Who developed radar? Radar was developed independently in many countries in the 1930s. But, in 1935, Robert Watson Watt, 1892-1973, a Scottish physicist, was the leader of a group that created the first radar defense system for the British military. Although a large number of nations, from the United States and Canada, to Britain, France, and Germany, to the Soviet Union and Japan, worked to develop radar systems during the 1930s. The British system of ground-based radar stations were the first to use radar effectively in warfare. By the early 1940s radar systems were miniaturized enough to be installed in aircraft so that they could engage other aircraft in fights at night. Ironically, Watson Watt became a deserving victim of his own technology 19 years later. According to Canadian police, Watson Watt had been speeding on a stretch of Canadian road and was detected by a police radar gun. Watson Watt willingly paid the fine and drove away. What is a stealth plane? Stealth aircraft are planes that are able to avoid radar detection. The materials on the plane's surfaces and their peculiar shapes and angles deflect radar waves away from the plane. Or in some instances, the plane's outer fuselage can actually absorb the radar waves without reflecting it back to the enemy radar transmitter. Refer to the fluids chapter for more information about aerodynamics and aviation. What is a stealth plane? Stealth aircraft are planes that are able to avoid radar detection. The materials on the plane's surfaces and their peculiar shapes and angles deflect radar waves away from the plane. Or in some instances, the plane's outer fuselage can actually absorb the radar waves without reflecting it back to the enemy radar transmitter. Refer to the fluids chapter for more information about aerodynamics and aviation. How has radar been used in astronomy? In radar astronomy electromagnetic waves are aimed at planets. By analyzing the reflected signals, the position, 
velocity, and shape of objects in our solar system can be determined. In the early 1960s, radar was used to determine the exact distance between Earth and Venus and Earth and Jupiter. Later, radar was installed on the space probe Magellan to map the surface of Venus. Radar astronomy has been beneficial in determining distances in our own solar system. But the reflected signals would be much too weak from objects outside our solar system. How has radar been used in astronomy? In radar astronomy electromagnetic waves are aimed at planets. By analyzing the reflected signals, the position, velocity, and shape of objects in our solar system can be determined. In the early 1960s, radar was used to determine the exact distance between Earth and Venus and Earth and Jupiter. Later, radar was installed on the space probe Magellan to map the surface of Venus. Radar astronomy has been beneficial in determining distances in our own solar system. But the reflected signals would be much too weak from objects outside our solar system. What is next red Doppler radar? Next red or next generation weather radar is one of the most recent technological breakthroughs for weather forecasting. Nexrid relies on the Doppler effect to calculate the position and the velocity of precipitation. The spherical Nexrid radar tower emits radar waves 360 degrees around and calculates the frequency shift of the reflected radar waves off rain, sleet, and snow. The Nexrid computers then translate the information and represent the possible weather problems on a color-coded map for analysis. The maps are readily available in real time over the web. The goal and main function of Nexrid Precision Radar is to save American money and lives. By predicting threatening weather problems and warning the public before tragedy strikes. Meteorologists estimate that this new tool for weather forecasting has saved millions of dollars. And many lives through its early warning systems. One of the most impressive advancements has. Been in pinpointing tornadoes and hurricanes more accurately than what was possible before Nexrid. Each Nexrid station scans a radius of 125 miles with excellent accuracy. And less accurately up to 200 miles. A new system, developed since 1994, is Terminal Doppler Weather Radar, or TDWR. This system, installed at 45 airports, uses radar waves with 5 cm wavelength rather than the 10 cm used in standard weather radar. As a result it can resolve objects with twice as much detail, permitting it to detect wind shear and microbursts. Its range, however, is half that of Nexrid and it can't see through heavy rain. 
Radar images are available to the public at www.radar.weather.gov. What is next red Doppler radar? NEXRAD, or Next Generation Weather Radar, is one of the most recent technological breakthroughs for weather forecasting. NEXRAD relies on the Doppler effect to calculate the position and the velocity of precipitation. The spherical NEXRAD radar tower emits radar waves 360 degrees around and calculates. The frequency shift of the reflected radar waves off rain, sleet, and snow. The NEXRAD computers then translate the information and represent the possible weather problems on a color coded map for analysis. The maps are readily available in real time over the web. The goal and main function of NEXRAD Precision Radar is to save American money and lives. By predicting threatening weather problems and warning the public before tragedy strikes. Meteorologists estimate that this new tool for weather forecasting has saved millions of dollars. And many lives through its early warning systems. One of the most impressive advancements has been in pinpointing tornadoes and hurricanes more accurately than what was possible before NEXRAD. Each NEXRAD station scans a radius of 125 miles with excellent accuracy and less accurately up to 200 miles. A new system, developed since 1994, is Terminal Doppler Weather Radar, or TDWR. This system, installed at 45 airports, uses radar waves with 5 cm wavelength rather than the 10 cm used in standard weather radar. As a result it can resolve objects with twice as much detail. Permitting it to detect wind shear and microbursts. Its range, however, is half that of Nexrid and it can see through heavy rain. Radar images are available to the public at www.radar.weather.gov. How is radio astronomy different from radar astronomy? Radar astronomy measures the reflections of transmitted radio waves to determine an object's size, position, velocity, and surface characteristics. Radio astronomy is like optical astronomy but it uses the VHF, UHF, and microwave portions of the electromagnetic spectrum rather than the infrared and visible portions. Radio waves penetrate the dust that hides the centers of galaxies and obscures regions where stars are forming. They can also detect hydrogen gas that constitutes 85% of the known mass of the universe. How is radio astronomy different from radar astronomy? Radar astronomy measures the reflections of transmitted radio waves to determine an object's size, position, velocity, and surface characteristics. 
Radio astronomy is like optical astronomy but it uses the VHF, UHF, and microwave portions of the electromagnetic spectrum rather than the infrared and visible portions. Radio waves penetrate the dust that hides the centers of galaxies and obscures regions where stars are forming. They can also detect hydrogen gas that constitutes 85% of the known mass of the universe. What alternative analog methods are used? As was described above, modulating a carrier wave produces additional frequencies above and below the frequency of the carrier. These frequencies are called sidebands. There is identical information in the two sidebands, so many radio services filter out one of the two sidebands. Resulting in a single sideband broadcast, or SSB. SSB can work with either AM or FM radios. It has half the bandwidth of a double sideband broadcast. So more radios can use the same part of the spectrum. On a warm day, why do water droplets accumulate on the outside of glasses and soda bottles? The water does not seep through the container, but instead comes from the air surrounding it. Water vapor is the gaseous form of water that is in air below the boiling point of water. As discussed above, it takes a larger amount of energy to vaporize water. So the molecules of water in the air have more thermal energy than do the molecules in the colder glass. So when the water molecules strike the glass they transfer much of their thermal energy to the glass. The colder water molecules join together to form water droplets on the glass. The process is called condensation. Condensation also occurs on window panes when the outside is cold and the interior air is warm and humid. 